Hello everybody, like way this for you. Today I'm gonna to show you how to solve the void cube. So before we begin, the reason I'm remaking this is my last void cube tutorial was one of my most popular videos and it was getting a lot of dislikes, so I knew I could make a better video, so here it is. But anyway, I'm gonna be showing you how to solve this void cube. It's the Rubik's Void Puzzle. And uh, you'll need to know how to solve a 3x3 three three to solve this, and so if you don't know how to solve one of those, you can check out uh, my latest 3x3 three three tutorial, which will be on my channel. I'm not going to have a link to it because it's always changing, but, but yeah, just go check out that and learn how to solve a normal one first. But once you know that, uh, you should be ready to get started on this. So before we get started with just solving it, I know there's going to be some people who just need to know how to solve two uh, corners or two edges around, and if you need to know that, uh, just press the uh, annotation that's right here, or the link in the description to the time code, and it'll bring you to where I show you how to solve the parity. But let's begin with just solving it. So it's going to be more of a walkthrough solve than just a full -out tutorial, because again, if you've followed my other 3x3 tutorial, you should already know how to do this. It's just, it just can be a little bit difficult to apply it to this cube. Okay, so the first step is obviously the cross. So you have to make uh, extra precautions to make sure that you get the right color scheme because if you get, get a normal Rubik's Cube real quick when you're making the cross and you're matching the pieces up just like that one and this one you know you match it up to the centers so you match it up with the center and of course the white center just like that but in this one there's no centers along here to match them up to so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a yellow piece which is what I like to start with on this cube and we're going to find a corner that has uh, the same two colors on it. At least the same two colors. Like this one, it has yellow and orange. This one also has yellow and orange. And we will match it up with the corner. And you need to make sure that you don't match it up like this, because that is incorrect. And if you need to know how to do this, you can really just pretend that you have a cross here, and then use the basic normal algorithms that you know to put uh, corners in. And then from here, we know that because green is right here, then the yellow and green piece needs to go here. So I can just put that in. And so now we're actually going to find the other uh, yellow and orange piece. And we'll put it on the other side of the corner. So it's this one right here. And you see, now the piece that needs to go in here is blue. And you don't have to preserve these corners. You can if you want to, using a couple of special algorithms, but it doesn't really matter. But then once you've got these three using the corners that are adjacent to the first two, you can just put in the last one, which will be the last remaining one. And you have the cross, and it will have the correct color scheme. So from here, uh, it actually does not matter the alignment of the middle layer while you're doing this. Uh, all you have to do is put in the corners like normally. So I'll put that in. I'll put that one in. And I'll put this one in. And you can do F2L well if you know it, but it just can be a little bit more difficult. And so now what you're going to do is just align this any way you want to. Uh, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, and then you find a piece that needs to go in one of these slots, just like always. I'll see this piece needs to go in here. Put it in like normal. Uh, this piece needs to go in here. And so make sure you lined up the color. And then use it. Use the appropriate algorithm. Um, this one needs to go into here, and this one needs to go into here, and that will be the first two layers. So as for the last one, the color that's opposite of yellow, or whatever side you started on, uh, to find that you just look around and find the common color on each of these edge pieces, and so for this one it will be red, and so you see since all these are not red right here. That means I have a dot case. And so this would be just the same as a dot on a normal Rubik's Cube. And so to solve this, you just do your normal algorithm. And then your normal algorithm again. And then your normal algorithm again. And there you go. And if you had just the line, or so the two pieces, or the cross, the two adjacent pieces, uh, you would do it the same way as you would on a normal cube. So now, we just need to uh, line these edges up. So that piece and that piece, those are opposite. So I'll do a soon, and then another soon. There we go. And then, 
you see none of these pieces are in their correct positions none of the corners and so we do that algorithm this one is in the correct place so we do the algorithm right here and now we have parity and so you know if you have parity if you have two correct corners and two incorrect corners and so just to simplify things for a second uh, we're just gonna align these like rotate these just pretending that the rest of these are solved so we can just do our normal algorithm here and there we go and now we just have these two that need to be swapped and it's actually quite a bit more common that you have two of them next to each other that need to be swapped but it's the exact same thing and if you haven't been following along with the tutorial you may be using a different method and you may have two edges that need to be switched and so if you have two edges you actually have a really ideal case uh, you can actually click the annotation on the screen now and that will bring you to where I show you how to actually solve it but now I'm just going to show you how to get from the corners being switched to the edges being switched and so if you have two adjacent ones it's really easy and you just need to do a T permutation which on a normal cube you can see it switches these two corners and these two edges and so if you have the two adjacent ones it'll switch those two back into place and it'll move these two edges uh, well out of place but because we have a case like this where the two opposite corners need to be swapped we need to do a setup algorithm before that and so that algorithm is you hold it into the back so these two pieces are like this then you do R prime U R prime D2 R U prime R prime D2 R2 and so now you see you have two adjacent ones that need to be swapped and so now to get to the actual T permutation it is holding them on the right R U R prime U prime R prime F R2, U prime, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, F prime. And now you see the only two pieces that are switched on the cube are these two. Okay, so now for switching these two pieces, so this is a method I kind of came up by myself. So basically you hold it on the bottom, and then you do an M prime. So that's turning the middle layer like this. And you can do it with your back finger if you want. U2, uh, M, which is turning it this way. U2, and then M prime again. And now you see all we'll have is these pieces that need to be flipped around. And so how you fix this, you're actually going to have to use a super flip algorithm, which, in case you don't know, is this algorithm. And it switches these pieces around. And so how we do this is we do a couple of setup moves, which is F, U prime, F prime, and then we do a super flip. And so what that super flip is, is M, so turning it like that, U prime, M, U prime, M, U prime, M, U prime. So pretty repetitive. Then you just uh, undo those setup moves, which would be F, U, F prime, and solved. So, let's review all those cases one more time. So, what I'm going to display on here is a big long list of algorithms on the screen. And along here, I'm going to have the different cases that you can start, the starting positions, basically. And so, the first one is opposite edges, like this. And then, the second one is adjacent edges, like this. And then the last one is opposite edges, like this. And so basically choose where you want to start from, and then do the algorithm all the way down the screen from the starting position. So, here we go. The first starting position is the opposite ones, and you see, you can do this algorithm. And now we've gotten to this point, and we can do this algorithm. So now we actually have to turn the cube so these are on the bottom, and then we can do the algorithm. And 
And there we go. And if that was a little bit fast and overwhelming, I'm going to have a Google document in the description. And I'll show you that exact same thing. And I'll give you a little bit of instruction as well. So I hope this tutorial helped you. I did as best I can to remake it a lot better as the last one was. Um, but yeah, I really don't have too much to say. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments below. So if you don't know how to solve it, uh, something that's confusing you, um, leave a comment. And I'll see you guys next time.